The two color modes you see on the screen are the two most predominant in the programs we're going to be using. And there is one other color mode called grayscale, which we'll talk about in a minute. But RGB and CMYK are two that you absolutely must understand the difference between them. So I won't belabor this. There will be more on color from other resources uh, during the semester. But before we get into Illustrator and working with color, and then before you get into Photoshop and InDesign and Premiere and utilize color there, let me explain to you the difference between these two color systems. Yes, dear. So the one on the left, RGB, acronym for red, green, blue, is going to be the color system you will use most consistently. Uh, it is color that is created by emitted light. In other words, if you look at your phone, if you watch your television, if you go to the movies, anytime you see images that are made up of light, RGB is going to be the color mode that is utilized. So if you look at the screen here and you see the red, the green, and the blue on a black background. Now that's significant oh in that if you are dealing with emitted light, black is actually the absence of light. It's darkness, therefore the absence of color. Now you see right in the middle where those three circles overlap, you have white. So for RGB color, for emitted light color, white is the presence of all color, all the color waves. And so that's really important to distinguish when you compare it to CMYK on the right. So CMYK, stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key color, or black. And that is used when you are printing. So if you have a full color photograph that you want to print onto a piece of paper, you're stuck. Oh, you have man. to use CMYK. There's no other color system or mode that you can use to reproduce the original full color image. Now this is a very different type of a system. So if you look at the white background on that, white is the absence of color. So think of this as ink on paper and your eyes are absorbing the color by the light bouncing off of it and going back to your eyes and depending on the wavelengths will determine what the color is that you're seeing. So if you see a plain white piece of paper, that means there is no ink. Now you'll notice when cyan, magenta, and yellow all overlap, um, exactly the opposite of what happens with RGB. Black is the presence of all color. And so you can see the two systems really are about as opposite as they can be. And you need to make sure that you use the correct one at the appropriate time. So how does this relate to the different programs we're gonna use? I don't know. Well, Illustrator can work in either CMYK or RGB. Um, by default, if you open up an Illustrator file, it will open up as a CMYK file. But it can work in RGB, you just need to specify that. Photoshop also can work with both RGB and CMYK, but by default, it will open up in RGB color mode. And most of the time when you're working in Photoshop, you will be working in RGB color mode. Now, if you know something's going to be printed, you'll end up converting it to CMYK before you print it. But you'll be working in RGB most of the time. One very important point to make is if you don't need to change your color mode to CMYK, then don't. What? There's Ever. never a good reason to do that unless you are going to print something. Then you must. Otherwise, RGB is a much better color mode. Only has three color channels, takes less memory, and it has a much wider color spectrum, almost as wide as your eyes can see. CMYK has a much more limited color spectrum. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, third color mode, grayscale. Now grayscale, you are probably familiar with this. If you need to reproduce a black and white photograph or you have a piece that's just all grays, then grayscale is the best color mode to use. Grayscale that we most commonly use is called 8-bit. And what that means is you have access to 256 values between white and absolute black. 
So you'll notice that in that bar chart on the screen, zero is black, the absence of any light at all, and 255 is absolutely white. But you have another 254 shades or tints um, to use between those two extremes. Anyway, let's get on into Illustrator and I'll show you all this stuff in action.